Over the past 20 years, our first reader's short stories have appeared in more than 75 magazines and anthologies. He is the founder and publisher of Dark Arts Books and is the winner of the Bram Stoker Award for Horror Writers from the Horror Writers Association. His sixth novel, an erotic horror novel titled Nightwear, is being released today. Woohoo! Today. Woo! By Sally Everson. Please welcome John Everson. Excited. Nightwear actually has been out in ebook now for two or three months, um, but the publisher sort of has this delay, so ebooks came out first, and now today is the trade paperback release. So you should find it in stores, wherever there are bookstores, which seems to be less and less easy to find these days, but some bookstores apparently still exist and have it. So, what I'm going to do for you tonight. Um, I always like to do sort of an excerpt from a novel, but I hate to just leave people with a piece of something because it's so unfulfilling. Um, I have books if you want any, so come see me. I even have a big promo poster over there from my publisher, which is kind of cool. Um, but I'm going to do an excerpt from the novel, and then I'm going to do a full short story, so you get a complete work. Um, I'm going to read from Nightwear the prologue. Um, and this will tell you almost nothing about the novel, because <laughs> the prologue is sort of a freestanding thing. Um, the novel actually is about a couple who are swingers, um, who get into this lifestyle. And the husband sort of uh, allows the wife to do what she wants to do. And then they get this invitation to this ultra-secret club called Nightwear. And Nightwear is the place where you can do anything, anything, anything you want. And well, Ray, the wife, really gets into it, and Mark, the husband, says, you know, maybe we should go. <laughs> um, and so ultimately what happens is Ray kind of gets lured into the club, and Mark is excised, and you only find Nightwear if you get an invitation, because it's in a different place every month. So when Ray doesn't come home, Mark sort of has to go on this excursion to try and find his wife, and it's sort of a go down into hell to bring your wife, your love back. Um, so that's what Nightwear is about. The prologue is kind of a strange thing that will be explained later in the novel, but here's how it runs. The world stretched away in a field of stalks. They were everywhere, as far as the eye could see. At first glance, it looked like a cornfield, branch after branch after branch of amber leaves standing quiet and still in the faint summer breeze. But then Colin looked closer and saw that the amber wasn't truly amber. The color was lighter, more suffused with a blend of white and pink. There were waves of fleshy gray, not amber. And flesh was a good color description because the stalks weren't gray. The top of each thin trunk held a head. Blonde hair hung in ragged curls down the shoulders of many, while many other scalps were shaved. The brunettes stood out in the field their dark locks looking almost like spoiled produce in the midst of so much pale flesh. Because it was truly a field of flesh. Thin, naked bodies all standing straight and tall, arms at their sides, heads forced to stare straight ahead. Nobody hung their face. Nobody lifted their arms. The sea of naked men and women stood as one, stiff and ready. They stared in one direction and blinked only occasionally. Mostly, they just stared and waited. What the hell was this place? He'd gone down a corridor looking for a private place to smoke, and somehow he'd gotten turned around. Melly always said he had no sense of direction. Of course, she was always the one who liked to give direction. He imagined back in the blue room she'd already surrounded herself with five guys, all of whom were following her commands and working with hands and lips to pleasure different portions of her anatomy. He needed to get back there to enjoy the view. But the old wooden door hadn't led him back to the swingers club. It had led him to this true obscenity, a Halloween nightmare. He walked forward until he stood at the beginning of the field, and now he could see the details of the bodies. He saw the breasts of the broken teeth still clung to gnarled masses of pink flesh and yellowing bone that grew beneath a crushed mound that once might have been a nose. The face did not move. Its eyes did not blink. 
He looked down and saw a latticework of pink that cut across the man's shoulders and chest. Scars from some horrible beating or accident. Scars like a road map to a destination that he did not want to know about. Are you the harvest or the harvester? The voice asked from somewhere inside the bodies. Voices whispered from deep within the rows. The field of flesh suddenly drew a breath as one. The sound was slow and deep, a building gasp of communal fear. He could see the field shifting violently a dozen or more rows down the line. He heard something scrape against stone and then a scream. He turned trying to locate the sound, but his vision was blocked everywhere by the bodies, and all of them had turned, if they could, craning their heads to stare at him, open mouthed. What? He hissed at the woman closest to him. Her bloodshot blue eyes looked as if she pried them open with toothpicks. Her lips were drawn back as if she was about to scream. Nearby to his left, someone did. Are you the harvest or the harvester? A voice called again from deep inside the field. Barry turned and saw something black rise above the heads of the bodies just a few rows beyond. The bodies in that area seemed to move and shake as if a heavy wind was cutting through the field. Then he saw it again, a row closer, and again. He began to back up stepping down the narrow stone path towards the doorway he knew was just behind him, somewhere. He hadn't walked too far. And then he saw the pole and the long, curved silver blade at its end, and the black, hooded man who carried it. The figure raised the scythe high in the air, taking aim. The bodies all around him were staring in ghastly silence, breath drawn as if waiting for him to say something, do something. A whisper came at his shoulder. But it was too late for that. The blade descended, and someone in the field finally answered that insistent question. The harvest. <laughs> so that's not Mark or Ray, our wonderful couple, um, but somebody who happened to have gone into the backwoods of Nightwear and probably shouldn't have walked down yeah. that doorway. Um, Mark and Ray will discover all sorts of other disgusting, horrible, wonderful, crazy things, other places in Nightwear, and I hope you'll check it out. <laughs>